Coming up at Titan FC 37, the man that's joining us now is going to be taking on Zach Boucha. It's Jason Novelli, who's 10-1 in his career. He enters this fight with three straight wins. His last win coming in November as he submitted Cody Rice at AFC 118. Jason, as always, appreciate time. Of course, this is a matchup that was supposed to take place back in December. You, you take it on short notice. All twin, you know, the, everyone knows the fight card did not take place. It, it, where, when uh, you get approached with this fight, were you almost concerned that you weren't going to get a, a, the opportunity to take on Zach and that they were going to give you someone else? Um, I wasn't. With the short notice fight, it wasn't anything that was going to be a big deal if I had a different opponent or not. I actually thought I did have a different opponent in March, so they switched that up again. So. You try not to get stuck on one opponent and just stay ready for everybody. Is that kind of the mentality that you, you believe all fighters have to have? Because, I mean, look, you know, injuries are going to happen. Guys are going to fall out of fights. Fights are going to change. Do you, do you kind of feel like that's one of the major traits that you have to have as a fighter is essentially it's it's about you. It's not about the guy you're facing. Uh, definitely. You can't control all the other things outside of you, so. Why not focus on yourself more than anything and have them deal with that situation? Is that something that you learned early in your career, or did it take a little later for you to kind of uh, realize that mentality? Uh, it took me a little bit of time. Uh, experience uh, brings out everything. And instead of every time I was thinking more about how to beat certain styles and such, you're not as focused on uh, bringing out your own qualities and strengths to the table. So focusing more on myself has uh, just had everything flow so much better. And I uh, think my record's been proving it. It's getting better every time. And just by focusing on what I do best and getting that finer, sharper, and better every time. And they talk about that every fight. It's a better version of yourself. There, there's no tools that you, you have in that in that toolbox for you. Uh, you know, how much of a different fire do you believe you are from the last time you stepped in the cage in November? Well, just uh, that's all I do. It's, it's kind of crazy to watch the same fight over and over again and. I just approach it from different uh, standpoints every time, just seeing my mentality when I came in and um, not just techniques all the time. It's how you felt and where your mindset was. And I try and break all that down little by little. So I'm, I'm going to show a bunch of new, new things I've been working on. Uh, that's an, another thing that you have to continue to do. Um, as you improve yourself, you also have to uh, bring in new tricks and a little new game plan every time. One of the things you you always hear in the fight game is the next fight is the biggest challenge of your career. It's the toughest fight of your career. For you, why is Zach Butcher the toughest fight of your career? I'm just watching him. I'm, he seems to be a more patient fighter. Um, Seems to be a thinking type fighter. He makes it good adjustments um, within the the fight itself. But overall, um, he just offers a lot more tools that I have to look out for. So I'm going to be a more controlled game plan, but still going in looking to finish that fight as fast as possible. In terms of facing a guy that you say you know he's a patient guy and he does make you know the the changes that if things are going his way to kind of work it, how do you prepare for a guy that you know is going to be patient and, and it was not going to rush into things? I mean, is that something that it's just you merely your training partners really kind of give you that look to kind of you know let you know of hey, this is what you're going to see on fight night? Yes. You can't do it without your training partners, of course. And we've evaluated him from a couple different aspects or different standpoints. So we're going to hit him from all sides and see which one works best. 
he's a finisher. Uh, you know, he's done that tight, and he's done that other organizations. You, know, I think a lot of people who watched him tight, and they remember that that knockout win over uh, Landy Johns, and you know he's coming off that submission win. Uh, is there one trait you look at him and say that is where he's most dangerous, or do you look at him and say, man, he is dangerous in so many different aspects? I like to give them credit to be dangerous overall, but. Um, I do feel his, he says he likes to stand up, but I feel like his ground is where he's most comfortable. So we're going to try and keep this standing and he's going to give me the openings that I want. Once again, we're talking to Jason Novelli, who is 10 and one in his career. He's going to be returning to the cage on March the 4th, Titan FC 37 at the Clark County Event Center in Richfield, Washington. Of course, it's an event that you can watch live on UFCFightPass.com. Uh, ultimately, Jason, is the, what is the key for you in this fight? Is it ultimately just going in there, imposing what you want to do, and, and, and look for that finish as quickly as possible? Uh, definitely. That's the game plan for every fight. And I'm just coming in there doing what I do and making them fight my fight continually until I get those openings and finish that fight. In terms of the future, are you even thinking about what a victory here could mean for your career? Or is your mindset of, I just worry about the fight that's at hand and whatever comes after it, I'll worry about that after the fight. I'd be lying if you're not looking a little bit ahead. I'm 100% focused on this fight, but um, definitely either I'm looking for a title fight here in Titan or to move on to the UFC. I'm looking to move up as fast as possible. Uh, my fight in Alaska, I went just to fight in front of Dana White, and that worked out pretty well, but I'm still... Not their sign, so I'm fighting here for Titan. And of course, that part of Dan White's reality show, looking for a fight. When you, when you take that fight, were, was there any? Did you feel any additional pressure on that night to to make sure you went out there and, and put on an impressive performance because you knew, you know, the head man of the UFC is in, in attendance. Surprisingly, no, I didn't get as much pressure. It was all about the win and just. Uh, like like I say more than a few times, just doing what I do and coming out there to win. And I came out right off the bat, <laughs> got hit right in the face, and came back and submitted them within the next minute. So <laughs> could have went a little bit smoother, but it the results came through perfectly. I mean, anyone looks at your record, they they see, you know, win in 10 of your 11 fights. But is your mindset always, no matter what the result is, ultimately at the end of the day, you're looking more at the negatives as opposed to the positives of the fight because the negatives allow you to show where you have to improve in your game? Uh, definitely. So, like they say, you, you learn the most from a defeat. But I'm not sitting there waiting for a loss to – continue to learn so you just break down every fight win or lose and there's always going to be some negative and some positive but the negatives are the ones that you got to fix it's like i had a fighter recently tell me he goes i don't want to learn lessons in defeat i want to learn lessons in victory that's you know because ultimately you're, you're trying to get the victory here and of course your fight coming up here march 4th titan fc 37 with live on ufc fight pass against zach bucha jason i really do appreciate time and good luck in the fight man all right, thanks, Jason.